Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Destiny video. Now in today's video, I'm going to talk DLC, or more specifically, The Dark Below. Now up until now, anytime there's information surrounding The Dark Below, it's either been speculation or leaks, but finally today, Activision and Bungie dropped some official confirmation on what you'll see within it and when you can get your hands on it. So, first up, the all-important thing, the date. December 9th is the day that you will be able to get your hands on this DLC. If you already have the expansion pass, then you'll be able to download this as and when it comes out. But if you bought the normal edition of Destiny and you want to buy this, it will either set you back $20 or £20. So, with dates and money out of the way, let's take a look at what you're going to find within it. First up, there will be new weapons and armor, and these will include legendary and exotic items. Now, I'll touch on these more at the end of the video with some additional pictures, but for the time being, just to keep that in your mind. In addition to that, the level cap has been raised, or the light level cap has been raised, from level 30 to level 32. So if you're currently sitting at max level, you can now increase it by a further two levels. In addition to that, there will be new story quests and missions. Now this time around, they will be coming from a new vendor or new NPC who will be located in the tower. The NPC's name is Eris, and she's come forth bearing an ominous warning. Effectively, the Hive seek to summon a god, Crota, and this god is supposed to destroy Earth. So the idea is that you work with Eris, and you have to kind of take on various different quests to kind of sort of like uncover the plans and all that stuff which will obviously end up leading you towards the raid which is called Crota's End. But anyway, there will be new story missions and you will get them from a new NPC. The interesting thing is that this NPC is referred to as a vendor which means you will also be able to get items from her. It is mentioned that through this new character you will get items that will help you increase your light level. So it could well be that she's like a vanguard or a crucible vendor in that she sells legendary items and you have to build reputation for her and in turn they could therefore be pretty good items as opposed to the usual sort of like average rewards that are good up until you get to a certain point and then you discard them. Either way that's a little bit of speculation but she is listed as a vendor and she will give you items so there's your motivation to do her story missions. It's also worth mentioning that Bungie did say in an interview before that they are kind of keen to sort of, you know, they have been listening to feedback, they have been listening to what people have been saying, and they did say that these story missions will be fundamentally different to those that we experienced in the initial game. So, you know, be that that they may be more immersive and more kind of like, you know, involving in the whole sort of story aspects, and they might try and bring the story slightly further to the front, as opposed to kind of just sort of leaving it in the background and letting you kind of fill in the gap with lore and grimoire cards. Either way, how that's put into motion remains to be seen, but do expect these to be slightly different or at least slightly more interesting than those story missions you've been doing up until now. Hopefully I won't just have to go somewhere and deploy a Dinklebot and then just defend him while he does something. Then in addition to that, there will be a new strike, the Will of Crota, which will pit you and your fire team against Omnigul, who is working to expand the Hive army at the command of her master, Crota. Now if you're on PlayStation, you will also get a second strike, which is known as the Undying Mind, and that will obviously in time come to Xbox, but won't be until fall 2015. So, they are your strikes. In addition to that, there will be three new competitive multiplayer arenas, Pantheon, which is set deep within the Black Garden in an ancient Vex temple. Skyshock, which is an old interplanetary defense array, which has both vehicles and infantry engagements, so this is going to be a much larger scale map. And the Cauldron, which is an abandoned hive ritual site that offers close quarter combat. So it looks like there's going to be a couple of close up maps and one large one. And in addition to all of that, the thing that people are no doubt most excited about is Crota's End. That is the next raid. Now, first up, let me start off by saying the raid this time around follows the same suit that the Vault of Glass did in that it will not be accessible right at the start. When the DLC first drops, you're going to have to play for the story missions, the strikes, all those different things like that before you can experience the raid. It's obviously a tactic by Bungie because otherwise all the high level players, the level 30 players, would clearly just go straight to the raid so they can try and get that good armor, those exotics and all that stuff, and then obviously come back and do the story later. So Bungie obviously want you to experience the story first up, so that way they will uh, drop the raid later on. There's no current confirmed date as of yet as to when the raid will drop. I imagine it will be, you know, one to two weeks after launch, that way it gives people enough time to complete the story stuff, and for players that are still playing through the original story, it gives them time to catch up, work through the old raid, work through the new content, and also hopefully not get left behind. So, as and when I do find out a date for that, I will let you guys know, but for the time being, it is still up in the air. And there you have it, that is a breakdown of everything that's going to be coming in the Dark Below DLC. Now let's take another look at some of those weapons and armor that I spoke about at the beginning of the video. You might remember that I put up a video about a week ago where I was talking about the initial kind of like leaks that were surrounding the DLC and sort of things that people had kind of uncovered and we now have some pictures that line up with those. So first up this cool sort of well what I thought was a shark looking rocket launcher but it's clearly a dragon is called Dragon's Breath and it's a solar damage rocket launcher. This one here is a fusion rifle I don't actually have a name for this one just yet but it is a fusion rifle. Then this is a shotgun and I believe it's the Devil's Dew which is another one of the ones that were shown uh, last time in the video that I put up and it's an exotic. All of the weapons I've shown you so far by the way are obviously exotics. You can probably tell that by the way that they look, the fact that all exotic weapons normally look pretty crazy. So this is the Devil's Dew shotgun. Then these right here are gauntlets for the Titan. They are the exotic item called Ruin's Wings or at least they look like they are. 
They're another one of the ones that were shown in the video last week. This is a new chest for the Warlock. Again, if it's an exotic, this could well be the Starfire Protocol. Or alternatively, it could just be a Hive item. But also, if you pay attention to what he's got on his arms, that looks like some Hive kind of gauntlets. They do look really, really cool. I'm definitely looking forward to the Hive kind of stuff this time around. It's going to have that sort of like cool, distressed, bony look to it. So that's definitely something I think is going to go really well with my Hunter. Then this is a new cape, which looks so flipping awesome. As I said, I do like the whole kind of distressed look that the sort of Hive equipment or gear is going to have so this just looks flipping cool i like that kind of metal block on his neck as well so that looks really cool and obviously again paying attention to his arms there's some kind of metally thing sticking out from his shoulder that could potentially be some of the raid gear because if you look at the uh the raid arms for the hunter there's one called the dog gauge and it looks like from the picture that there's sort of these spiky things coming out the shoulder so it could well be that then this is a shot from what could well be crota's end and that could in the middle potentially be crota this shot obviously gives you a better look at the titan again with those cool looking arms he's got these sort of like bony thing around his uh his waist but pay attention to his gun that right there what he's holding is the necrochasm which is an arc damage exotic auto rifle and again there's that warlock with those cool sort of bony shoulders this is obviously a shot from the raid given that there are six people there with this sort of red mark above them so it looks like there'll be some kind of mechanic like the cursing one that was in the vault of glass but obviously something different this time round. and then the very final image is this one which i'll leave you with here which is the kind of promotional image for the dark below really really cool and again that green ominous figure in the background could well or should or most likely is crota anyway that's it that is your kind of breakdown for everything that's currently been announced for the dlc as and when there is more stuff announced or more stuff kind of like revealed but for the time being if you did enjoy this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up hit the like button and show your support that does really help me out and obviously don't forget to subscribe for daily gaming videos drop a comment down below and let me know what you think of all of this news and are you looking forward to the dlc and as always thanks for watching take it easy catch you next time peace out